So two videos ago, I desoldered the USB and the Ethernet port of a Raspberry Pi. Hey. So then why did I decide to solder the USB back on? Stay tuned and you'll find out. But before that, this is video five of my building a handheld console series. I have put all the past videos in a playlist, which I have linked in the description. So if you want to check those out, you can. And also you might want to subscribe if you don't want to miss the future videos and the final build. Cool. Now let's get back to the video. So I want to build my own RetroPie handheld console. And since I don't know how to design PCBs at all, I'm not going to use the compute module, which leaves me with the normal Raspberry Pi and desoldering components as I see fit. But after I did all those mods, I realized one thing. How am I meant to type on this thing? I can use the touch screen as a mouse, so that's fine, but I know I'm going to be needing to type at some point, so yeah. So I had to connect to a keyboard somehow. And it would also be nice to have a USB in the final console build so that I can connect an extra controller in case I want to play with someone. So I decided to solder one back on. There's only one problem with that plan. There's no labels on the pins, so I've got no idea what does what. So I had to take it to Google and dig around and I found this image. Now I know it's not the most straightforward thing in the world, but it should be okay as long as I keep in mind the orientation of the board, right? This kids is what we call foreshadowing. I proceeded to make a schematic of the pins and then try to label them according to that image. But I think I must have swapped the board, turned it around a few too many times because I definitely lost track of the pins. So um, that could have been pretty bad for the board, but I didn't need to connect any high power components to that USB. So luckily, I don't think the danger was that high. So I went ahead and cut some cable about 10, 15 centimeters, and then I stripped both ends. Right, that's six, so I need three more. So I've got my two grounds here. Then this is the V bus, so that's done. And now I need data plus and data minus. So I'll cut two more white ones and it will be, the minus will be white and the various pluses will be colored. I'm still to decide. I think yellow is going to be data just because I think that's usually what they do in USB. I'm not sure. So, And then I tin the ends to make it easier to solder and went ahead with the procedure. The cables are stripped. Now i got to tin them and then we can start soldering. One half done. 17 more to go. It's got to be a smart way of doing this, but lucky for me, I've got this, which it's not very useful for soldering, I don't like it, but it's got these clips so I can use those to hold the cables in place and do more than one at once. All right, that one should be tinned enough. This one I'm going to put it under because it's hanging off the board. All right. One side is done. Now, on the other side. I think I'll just try to like solder them on top and have the solder joint hold it together. So it seems to have stuck there. Yeah, this one's a bit happier to stick, so that's good. Um, then ground, so a black one. Black one? Now, another white one. And then the green one, and that's it. We can do the other side, and hopefully it will work as well as I think it will. I guess we'll find out for real if I got the pins right, because I have no idea. I've been going over pictures and stuff, but I don't know. 100%. Everything is connected. I'm going to add a tiny bit of flux on each one. It's kind of hard to solder in this position. There we go. And now I'm going to snap the excess off or snip, whatever. 
That's it. Now I should have a working USB 3. Once I finished soldering it, I plugged in my receiver and I saw that everything worked great. Yay! Except it didn't. I said that earlier. I, you should have paid attention. Right. Here goes nothing. USB over current. Check your USB devices. I don't exactly know what I've done. I don't think I've got the the pins right, so I might have to have a look at that again. But it's getting pretty late, so I might do that tomorrow. So once I realized my mistake, I desoldered everything and swapped them around. I did it the next day, but still, I got it done. I've got my keyboard here, so this time it should work. Great success! Cool. Well now, I can connect to the Wi-Fi and what I'm going to do first, so I don't ever have to do this again, is install a virtual keyboard so that I can use the touch screen to type stuff. Okay. So, oh yeah, I'm going to connect to the internet because that was... I probably won't be able to install anything without the internet, so... Cool! So now I'm connected to the internet. So all we need to do is go to the terminal and do sudo apt install matchbox keyboard. Looks good to me. And once that was done, I installed my virtual keyboard and everything went great with the keyboard and it worked and they lived happily ever after. Except it, they didn't. The keyboard launches in the middle of the screen and is a tad bit small in my opinion. And from what I read on the internet, it's got something to do with the screen resolution, but that's another problem for another day. Okay. Uh, accessories, keyboard. <laughs> Why is that so small? At least I got that USB on. 